Welcome everyone, my name is Eric Anderson. I am the owner and inventor of the Orion Scoring System, and you are joining us today for our webinar, The Basics of Using Orion. Now this webinar, we are largely intending it for users that are brand new to Orion. Those of you who may be interested in Orion, who don't have it yet, or those of you who may have already used Orion for a couple years, you will still probably get some value out of it. But uh, this webinar is primarily focused on those who are brand new to Orion. And I should also mention that it really is just the basics of using Orion. There are lots and lots of features to Orion, many of which we simply do not have the time to get into. Uh, but we are going to try to cover as much as we can, and again, it's going to be focused on those who are new to Orion. We are going to break this up into four different sections. First, the installation and setup of Orion. This is going to include both learning where you can get help, um, as well as installing Orion and installing the scanner drivers. Talk a little bit about how to install the Orion mobile app and how to initialize your athlete database. The second section is going to be on creating a match. Uh, we've provided lots of different, um, we call them match properties, lots of different settings that you can have to customize the match to your specific needs. And we're going to talk about uh, those settings. Uh, next is going to be adding athletes and teams to your match. And then finally preparing targets, which is largely uh, printing barcode labels uh, for the targets that are about to be shot. The third section is going to be on scoring targets. This will include both Orion's auto score feature as well as the score of verification process. And then the final section is on results. We have lots of different ways that you can create results for your match. And we're going to talk about the three big ones, printing results, online results, and results within the Orion mobile app. In our webinar today, we are going to be primarily focused on a single example, which is, a, which is going to be a three position air rifle, three by 10 course of fire. We chose this pure and simple because this is the most common rule book and the most common uh, course of fire used in Orion. For those of you who may be using Orion for a small bore rifle, air pistol, BB gun, uh, any of our other supported disciplines, almost everything in today's webinar is going to be relevant to, to you. We're just using the air rifle 3x10 as our example. First up is going to be on the installation and setup of the Orion scoring system. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn to my Windows machine to take you step-by-step uh, -step through this process. You'll notice that uh, I already have our website opened up, orionscoringsystem.com, because there's a couple important uh, links off of our homepage that I want to bring to your attention. First up, possibly the most important as you're learning uh, Orion, is the desktop app support. We do have a comprehensive uh, help section, both online and within Windows. Uh, so as you're learning to use Orion, if you have a question, this is going to be the first place that you want to go to uh, to try to figure out your, your answer. And certainly, if you go through the help section and you don't find the answer that you're looking for, uh, the second place is just to go to our uh, give us a call. Um, you can click on the contact us link and that will provide our phone number, email address that you can um, uh, get a hold of us and we'll try to help you out. Now for those who are truly new to Orion, the first place that uh, you will want to go to is the setup and walkthrough guide. Most of the information that we're going to go through in this video is actually covered in the setup and walkthrough guide. And I strongly encourage everybody brand new to Orion uh, to go through this guide at your own pace. Uh, yes, we will be covering that material in this video, but it doesn't replace you going through it at your own pace. And the setup and walkthrough guide takes you step by step by step through that process. Now let's go ahead and go back to our homepage and we'll go through the process of installing the software. To install the software, you have to log into our website. Um, after you have purchased the uh, Orion, we're going to send you a important email called the Welcome to the Orion Scoring System email. In it has a few critical pieces of information in it. First, your account credentials, your account number, and your password. Second, it also has the code to activate your Orion software. So watch for that email, keep a hold of it, you will, you will be needing it. All right, so let's go ahead and log in. Um, login page, I know my account number and password. And they're going to take us to the customer information page. 
Now, in my case, yes, I do have multiple licenses on my account, uh, but you'll see your uh, license for your account as well as uh, the information we have on you. Uh, and you, you can, of course, update uh, pretty much all of this information if, if you desire. Over on the uh, left-hand side, you can update your customer information, you can change your password, and you can uh, update your email subscriptions uh, all, all from this link. Now let's uh, go ahead and get the software installed so we can get started. Click on the software downloads link. There will be a end user license agreement that you have to accept. Um, something our lawyers make us do, but yeah, read through the EULA at your pace. Once you are comfortable with it, there is an accept button at the bottom of the page. Then you'll come to the list of uh, releases that we have available. In almost every circumstance, uh, the version of Orion that you're going to want to install is the latest, the latest uh, production release. As of this uh, recording, that is version 2.5.23. To install, go ahead and click on the link. It will take a few seconds for the uh, installation files to download from our servers. Once it is downloaded, you can open up the install package and install it. Um, I personally already have Orion installed on my, on my machine. I'm not going to go through the entire installation process, but I do want to uh, uh, highlight it. So once the file is downloaded, click on open, and then Windows is going to try to protect you, um, but click on more information and say, yes, you do want to install the Orion system onto your machine. And then the setup wizard will uh, get started. Um, again, because I personally have Orion already installed, there's no need for me to try to install it uh, a second time. So I'm just going to, pardon me for that, I'm just going to uh, click on cancel. However, installing it for the first time, you will want to click on the next button uh, it's about three or four clicks before it is installed. Um, again, I'm going to click on cancel because I already have it installed. All right, uh, that is how you install the uh, software. Now, before we turn our attention to um, initializing Orion, getting the license activated, one more thing I want to do on a website before we move away from it. I'm going to go back to the My Account page. And I'm going to click on the link for result center settings. The reason for this is in, in order to push your results to either uh, the internet or to the mobile app, you have to enable it. Um, it is a feature that you can decide to um, decline, um, but hopefully everyone understands that it is a best practice to push your results uh, to the internet and to the mobile app so your athletes and spectators can see how, uh, how everyone did. The way that you enable it, go to the Result Center settings, and at the top of the page is a checkbox for Enable the Orion Result Center. Go put a checkbox there. Then everything else on this page is information that you can choose to put up on your, what we call your team homepage. Um, it is optional, just be aware that if you choose to uh, type in information, it will be uh, publicly available to everyone. All right, so I've installed the software, I've enabled Result Center, let's go ahead and open up Orion. So with Orion, uh, click on the executable from the um, uh, Windows Start menu. And when you open up Orion for the first time, it come across a screen like this. Um, if you are new to Orion, you're probably going to click on the very top link. I'm going to do that right now. And what it does is open up the Windows portion of the online help. A few moments ago, I referenced the online help. This is the Windows version of it. It's the same information, just available to you within Windows. And it's going to ask you for the uh, license form. And again, I'll go back to referencing the welcome email. In it will be a what we call the download code. It's uh, six to eight random characters that you would type into the box at the bottom of the screen. Now, again, because I have Orion installed, I don't have that download code. So a alternative way is to copy the license from our website. If you again go to the customer information page, you can click on the button, copy the license, and I'll say it got copied, and then go back into the form. I can say paste. That is my Orion license, and I can click on save. And then it's going to tell me that Orion's going to restart with the updated license, license information. Please note that um, just Orion restarts, not your entire machine. 
Now you're gonna notice um, once you have the license installed, you're gonna get a different welcome screen. It, it has some um, um, you know, unique characteristics to it, but uh, a couple important part, the top box on the left-hand side, this is where uh, you would have any match favorites that you can create. Uh, the second box is anything that, oops, I clicked, <laughs> clicked on that by accident, uh, anything that um, uh, recently opened files. Let me go back to the welcome screen. And then the uh, uh, third box is just news and updates. That's our RSS feed. Once Orion is opened up, let's talk about how to initialize your athlete database. I'm going to close the welcome screen and go over to the tab that we call the athlete database. Now I did accidentally open up a match, so I'm going to go ahead and close that right now because I don't want a match open. Uh, but yes, I go back to the athlete database. Um, a couple things to note about the athlete database. Uh, there is just one athlete database per license account. Um, it is not specific to any match. However, the information in the in the athlete database you can transfer to any match that you create down the, down the road. Now, in my athlete database, I already have a number of athletes that I have typed in their information. The athletes you put into your database are going to be the ones who are most uh, common frequently your, your range, typically your team. You know, if you're high school, your 10, 12, 14 athletes that you have. If you're a club, um, you know, the athletes who are members of, of your club. Um, the way that you do that, the, the last line of the athlete database, kind of like using uh, spreadsheets, uh, you just type in the information. Uh, and you'll also notice that I put myself into the athlete database. Um, I am no longer uh, a shooter, but I will act as a range officer, statistical officer, so I want my information in there as well. You'll notice that uh, there are a couple of columns in the athlete database that are kind of specific to uh, certain sports. And you can actually customize the information the athlete database tracks for your club. The way that you um, customize it is by going to database, and then database, database properties. Under the first tab, shooting styles, kind of select the, the, the style of uh, shooting that is most predominant in your club. Go back to our example, we are using three position air rifle as an example, so I already have three position air rifle type selected. Under memberships, you can actually also track uh, membership IDs from the major uh, governing bodies. Uh, that would be the CMP, uh, USA Shooting, NRA. And you can add or remove those as you wish. Under category fields, these are um, information pertaining to an athlete that helps describe the athlete in some way. In three position air rifle, we have the three position air rifle type, which says, are they a sporter athlete or are they precision? And we do have a number of different category fields uh, available to you to choose from. You'll notice there's like USA shooting classifications, there's NRA classifications, as well as a number of um, other information. Select the ones that are pertinent to your club. Under permissions, uh, these are, um, you know, again, you know, added permissions that Orion would like to use in order to, you know, you know, create matches a little bit better for you. Um, certainly, uh, the top option enable the cloud backup. Um, if you enable this, uh, Orion will store your match files in our cloud and make them available to you if something, you know, catastrophic happens. If you allow us access to your locations, that will make it easier for spectators to search for your matches. And then the uh, last choice there, default uh, local matches. This will either enable the result center uh, for what we call public access, where everybody can see everything, or the one that we recommend is actually the middle option, allow your athletes to view uh, the scores after each match. It doesn't allow the public to view it, but it does allow your athletes to view the scores. So that's the one that we do recommend. All right, uh, so that is saved. Our athlete database is set up. And the last thing we want, I want to talk about uh, before going into the next section is actually the mobile app. Let me go ahead and bring that up on our screen. Uh, the mobile app is a uh, uh, optional um, accompanying uh, app uh, for Android and iOS devices. It is intended for match officials or athletes. Uh, currently, we don't have great support for coaches or spectators, uh, but it is primarily intended for either match officials or athletes. 
Um, when you decide to install the mobile app, it is available uh, both through the uh, Google Play Store and the Apple um, App Store. Uh, search for Orion scoring system, uh, the complete uh, phrase. If you just search for Orion, you're likely to get something different. Um, once you have it installed, you do have to create an account. Um, click on the uh, sign up button and you're going to ask for some brief information, uh, your family name, your given name, email address. Uh, your email address is the account information. That's what links an athlete to the scores. Uh, so that's why we asked for that. And then of course, uh, the password and date of birth to make sure you're old enough uh, to use the app. Once you have created an account, again, I already have an account, so I'm not going to create it. But uh, once you have an account, it will send you an email to verify your email address. Uh, so watch out for that and uh, cl click on uh, confirm once you get that email. And because I have an account, I'm going to go ahead and log in. And this is the uh, what we call the home screen. And currently it says there aren't any matches for today. That's fine because I haven't set anything up. Uh, but we will return to the uh, iPhone um, app simulator um, um, after a few slides. When we talk about creating a match, we need to understand what exactly do we mean by the term match itself. Some people get the false impression uh, that a match is something specific to a competition. It isn't. Um, to Orion, the term match is actually just the data file associated with scores, athletes, and results. Sometimes training sessions, or it could actually be a competition itself. But the term match, when we refer to it, is actually just the data file. Uh, so let's me turn back to my Windows machine again, and let's go through the process, creating a match, adding athletes, and preparing targets. Uh, now, before I get into the actual match property itself, uh, one more thing I want to talk about in the athlete database uh, that I failed to do um, earlier, and that is the favorites column. Um, a favorite in the Orion terminology is somebody who is going to be um, uh, participating in pretty much every match that you have. So again, match is in a competition. It can be practices as well. So these are your team team members who show up pretty much every day to day to day. To day. Favorites, um, every time that you create a match, automatically get added. Uh, so just to demonstrate that, uh, you'll notice that I do have four athletes uh, selected as my favorite. And um, everybody else in the athlete database, we can add separately but the favorites are added automatically. So next, let's go ahead and see how we create a match and all the different properties we have inside of that match. To create a match, a couple of different ways of doing it. The easiest way is to click on the new match button. If you have the welcome screen open, you can click on the create a local match. Uh, unfortunately, we do not have time to talk about virtual matches today, but that is a, a, a separate feature that uh, for those of you who are interested, uh, I encourage you to read our help section. Uh, so create a local match, click on that, and when I do so, the match properties opens up. You're going to want to become familiar with the match properties and all the different settings we have available. Um, in, especially in the United States, uh, there are lots of different um, governing bodies, lots of different rule books, lots of different ways of creating matches. We tried really hard to make Orion as configurable as possible. And the way that you create those settings is through this match properties box. And we're going to take this one section at a time. Um, the very first section, the basics and rule book, um, the very first thing you're going to want to do is give your match a unique name. Um, as you see, the default for a match's name is just today's date. Uh, but let's give it something a bit more interesting. All right, so I'm just creating this match as Eric's example match. The start date and the end date have very little to do with the scoring mechanisms within Orion. Uh, however, they do have a lot of impact on the mobile app. Uh, so if you are using the mobile app, you're going to want to make sure that the start and end date are set correctly. Uh, the type of match, uh, we really don't have a lot of features for this yet, uh, something down the road uh, that we plan to use. And then the backup, I referenced it earlier. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of time to talk about it today. But as a minimum, we do recommend that you set it to backup the match file. Uh, so in this case, if something does happen to your match file, something does happen to your computer, uh, we do have copies of it in our, in our cloud system. 
under the uh, rulebook tab, we do have lots of different rulebooks that we support. As I said earlier, today we are going to be focusing on the uh, National Standard 3 Position RFO Rules, the most common rulebook, uh, but you can choose whatever rulebook is um, um, needed for your, for your match. And then a couple other options, system scoring, reentry. Again, because we're only covering the basics of Orion, I don't have a lot of time to talk about them, but they are features uh, available within Orion. Gonna click over to the Course of Fire tab. Once again, our example today is gonna be on a three x 10, so I have that selected. Um, down below, I do have the target type. I'm gonna use the most common target type, uh, which is a 12 bold target. And then some other information down here uh, pertaining to stat officers. Uh, relays change, not relevant unless you're using uh, outdoor target scoring. Uh, shots per bowl in air rifle, pretty much you always want to select one. Uh, if you're shooting air pistol, maybe small bore pistol, you do have other options for five or 10 shots per bowl. But in air rifle, we're gonna keep that set to one. And then team uh, cre creation. The first option is the number of team members. This is the number of athletes that count towards the team. The second option is the maximum number of team members. That is how many athletes you can assign to a team. So in this configuration, we could have 100 athletes being a member of a team, but only the top four athlete scores are going to get counted. I'm going to turn now to the result center settings. As I mentioned, the result center is our online system and our integration with a mobile app. At a minimum, when you are practicing, we do recommend that you keep it to allow athletes to view their scores. Uh, this will not allow public to see uh, their scores. This will just allow the athletes to view their own scores. Now for today's example, I do want to highlight are the result center and the uh, internet results. So I'm actually gonna switch this to upload scores and allow public access to scores. So this will allow everybody to have access to the scores, public and spectators and athletes, um, as well as sending uh, athlete scores to, the, um, to their mobile phone. Everything else on the screen, the contact information is optional, uh, but again, if you choose to fill it in, it will be available online. The next tab over is the competitor number. Lots of different options here. I wish I had the time to go through all of them, uh, but the one I want to highlight, the easiest one, is to use a sequential competitor number. So when you're adding athletes to your match, they'll automatically get assigned competitor numbers 101, 102, 103, 104, etc. Before I go on, I will highlight for many of you who host um, competitions sanctioned by the Civilian Marksmanship Program, uh, you can say, use the CMP competitor ID as the uh, competitor number, which is a requirement for CMP competitions. Uh, but if it's just practice or you're running a competition outside of the CMP, generally the one that you're gonna use is the sequ sequential numbers. Uh, the sanctioning tab, not relevant, again, unless you're comp sanctioning competition with the uh, civilian marksmanship program, so I'm gonna skip that for today. And then the categories tab. Um, categories allow you to group athletes together according to some characteristic. The default one with the uh, council rulebook is the three, three position air rifle type. So we're categorizing athletes as either sporter or precision. And you'll notice that we do have a, a number of other options. Um, the one I will talk about, every rulebook has a um, category field that you can customize. Most of these are not customizable, but um, there's at least one in every rule book that you can customize. So you can actually type in your own category fields. Um, the most common way to use this is with age groups. So I can create age groups in my category fields if I choose to do so. Um, but uh, for today's example, I'm just going to uh, show you that you can do this. And if you want more information, uh, please refer to our help section. But I will keep the three position RFO type uh, selected. With that, I can now click on save. And it's gonna confirm a few things to make sure um, uh, everything is correct. There are a few settings that you cannot change after you've created a match. The rule book and the course of fire are the two predominant ones that you cannot change after the fact. So you wanna make sure that those are set correctly. Go ahead and click on yes. And when I do so, I'm gonna click over to the Match Competitors tab. Match Competitors is everybody that is in the uh, match itself. These are both your athletes, your range officers, and your statistical officers, and even your coaches. 
um, you'll notice that um, I have four athletes that were already added to the match. A few moments ago, I talked about the favorites. These are actually my favorites from the athlete database. Again, they got added automatically. Now to add other people into the match, I can, of course, just go down to the last line and type in the athletes names or I can add athletes from the athlete database. So I go back to the athlete database. I can, for example, highlight Gabriela and Santiago, right click and say, add the athletes to the match as individual athletes. When I do so, their information that was in the athlete database gets carried over to the match competitor. So again, athlete database is not specific to any match. Um, but you can link the information from the database to, to your match competitors. And next, I want to demonstrate how you can create teams. Creating a team is a two-step process. Go over to the Match Teams tab, and the first step is just to create your, um, basically create the team holder. So we're going to say West Potomac High School, and I'm going to go ahead and say uh, West Springfield High School as well, just to give us two uh, teams in our match. All right. Once they are created, um, just like in the Ova Match Competitors tab, I can say if they are a sport or precision team and create some additional information. Now, to add athletes to the team, you go back to the Match Competitors tab, and you'll notice that there is a, a teams column. For each athlete, simply click on the drop down list and select which team they represent. Now, the second way to add athletes to a team is directly from the athlete database. If they are not in the, in the match itself, uh, you can, let's go back to my athlete database, highlight your athletes, right click and say Ath athletes to the match to the specific team. So when I do so, the athletes that I just added, you'll notice under the teams column, already have West Springfield High School selected. That's the basics of uh, athlete management. And I do want to talk about roles next. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and add myself to the match as well. Cause I wanna talk about the differences between athletes, range officers and coaches. Um, if I scroll over, uh, you'll see a couple columns here. Uh, there's columns for squatting information and uh, your categories, uh, but columns for who is an athlete, who's a coach, who's a range officer, etc. Um, in this example, I want to say that I'm a range officer. I am not a athlete. So I don't want to be listed as an athlete in the, in, in the squatting list, but everybody else will notice that I do have them selected as a athlete. And if I have somebody as a coach, um, I can listen, list them here as well. If I go over to the email column, you'll notice that the email addresses are, are filled in and they were from the um, uh, athlete database, but you'll notice that some of them are highlighted in gray, some of them highlighted in yellow. What this is actually meaning is, in my case, um, you saw me uh, previously uh, open up my mobile app, and when it's highlighted in yellow, uh, that means it actually has a link. It knows that I have a um, Orion mobile account. So um, any scores are going to be sent directly to my phone through that account. Uh, and we see that a, uh, a Camila Garcia, uh, she also has a account and Daniel Rodriguez also has an account. So again, if your athletes have an account with the mobile app, uh, when they shoot, their scores will be sent directly to them. All right, the last thing I wanna talk about in preparing for a match is creating barcodes. This gets us ready for the next step of actually shooting targets. Um, when you eventually go to scan targets into Orion, um, Orion doesn't know in and of itself who shot the target what position it was shot, what stage it was shot. Barcode labels encode all that information into basically an address size um, label that you put onto the target. So when the target is scanned, Orion does know who shot the target, what position it was, and what stage it was. Um, certainly in a competition, um, it is a best practice to print out barcode labels. In a practice session, you do have a couple options where it isn't necessary, uh, but it's still a, a good practice to do so. Um, so the way that you print out barcode labels, you select the athletes that you want to print labels for. Typically, you would do this for a um, the, the all the athletes. So let me go ahead and uh, select all the athletes here. And I'm going to right click and say print labels. 
So it's ready to print 33 labels. I have 11 athletes. I selected a three by 10. So I'm gonna print three labels per athletes. So yes, 33 labels. And I'm gonna go ahead and click on uh, okay. I'm not actually gonna print these, but I'm going to um, create a PDF file just so everybody can see what they look like uh, once they are printed. And this is what the uh, barcode labels look like. Uh, so you will notice, let me go ahead and zoom in. You have the uh, athlete, their uh, competitor number, and P1. And you'll notice that Daniel Rodriguez has three labels, um, P1, S1, and K1. That is short for, P is short for prone, S is short for standing, K is short for kneeling. Uh, inside of the barcode itself is in encoded with uh, his competitor number and the uh, prone and series information. And you'll also note that R1 means he is shooting on relay one and he is a member of the West Springfield High School uh, uh, team. You will print these out and then you apply them to the target. Uh, they go on the top right hand side. All right, that is all the information I had on creating a match. And so the next up is going to be on scoring targets. Scoring targets is quite possibly the heart of the Orion scoring system. It's what takes shot paper targets, digitizes them with your scanner, and then scores those uh, digital images uh, very accurately and very quickly. Now, uh, before we talk about how Orion scores targets and how, um, how that works, I do need to bring up what we call the shared responsibility. In order for your match to run smoothly, uh, we both have a role to play in, in that process. Over here at uh, Shooters Technology, uh, we are responsible for making sure that Ryan works correctly. That is something we take very seriously. Uh, we push out uh, bug fixes and enhancements about once a month. Um, and we, you know, we spend a lot of time to make sure the, the software works correctly. Um, you also saw that we have documentation. It is our responsibility to make sure Orion is documented properly. Uh, we have both the online and the Windows version of the documentation. And we are also responsible for helping you, the users, learn how to use Orion. Uh, this webinar, for example, is part of our commitment uh, for teaching you. Conversely, though, in order for your matches to run smoothly, you, the statistical officers, you, the coaches, also have responsibilities. Uh, you are responsible for knowing how to configure Orion. We just went through the entire match properties. Uh, you should uh, spend some time learning how to configure your matches according to your specific needs. Uh, you are responsible for keeping Orion updated. As I mentioned, we do update the software about once a month. When updates come available, we do recommend that you install them. You are responsible for knowing your rulebook, especially when it comes to um, addressing ab abnormalities, such as too many shots fired or too few shots fired. Your rulebook is your friend. Make sure you have a copy of it. And of course, you are responsible for using Orion correctly. Just like any other piece of software, if you put bad data into Orion, you're gonna get bad data out. Let's turn now to my uh, window system again. And before I go any further, I want to go back just for a moment about barcode labels and where they belong on the target. Um, now here we have a barcode label on a shot target and it is placed in the correct location in the upper right hand corner over the uh, name box. Some people will mistakenly believe that the barcode label should get placed, the printed barcode label should get placed over the printed um, um, on the target uh, barcode label. Um, the barcode label that's in the upper left hand corner that's printed on the target itself, that tells Orion what type of target it is. In this case, it's a telling Orion it's, it's a 10 meter air rifle 12 volt target. So you do not want to cover that up. Um, the barcode labels that you print um, on the address forms um, go in the upper right hand corner. Let's talk about autoscore. Uh, so again, autoscore, autoscore is a process that scans the targets, digitizes them, and scores them, and actually pushes the results out. Um, the way that we run autoscore is by clicking the scan and score targets button. This is the, uh, looks like a play button, triangle inside of a circle. Now behind the scenes, I already have uh, a four sets of targets. I didn't shoot targets for all the athletes. I have four sets of targets for four athletes, and I have barcode labels um, on those targets. Now, in order to place the targets into the scanner, all of our uh, currently um, available scanners, the C230, C240, M260, 
they all work the same way. I'm going to bring up a photo from our help documentation. Let's see, there it is. And this is how you load the targets into the scanner itself. The top of the target gets fed into the scanner first, and the targets are facing away from you. So what, when you have the targets properly loaded, you just see the backside of the targets. And now let's go ahead and score some targets. So I have uh, 12 targets loaded into my scanner, and I'm going to press the auto score button. And with this will communicate with your scanner. Um, does take a couple seconds to get kicked off. Now, as the targets are being scanned, you'll see that they are being assigned to the athletes. That's the uh, green highlighting in, in next to the athlete's name. Um, and actually, more specifically, what the green means is there are targets assigned to that athlete that have not been scored yet. Um, basically, just give Orion time uh, as it finishes the scanning process and as it begins the scoring process. All right, in the background, uh, you can't see this, but in the background, uh, my scanner has now scanned in all 12 of the targets, and they are being assigned to my athletes. I'm going to go ahead and open up uh, the athletes that I have targets for. Um, you'll see now that the targets are going from green to either white highlighting or yellow highlighting. Um, the white highlighting means, in this case, um, Orion expects 10 shots on the target and it has found all 10 shots. The yellow highlighting means that it is expecting 10 shots, but it found more or less than those expected 10 shots. Right. And as it finishes up, I'm just going to go ahead and click on the uh, Sofia Gar Garza's uh, prone target so we can take a look. And you'll notice that on her target, I did have a barcode label, and it did assign to her, uh, her, her name correctly, and it did assign to it uh, the prone series one. Um, and you'll notice the same thing for the sending target. And if I go through the other uh, athletes, yeah, you'll, you'll see the same thing. Um, on her prone target, um, a couple of navigational things that uh, you can be aware of. The plus magnifying plus sign will zoom in on the target. Um, I can hit the square button. Uh, to, to kind of zoom out and see the uh, length of the target. And then I can click on any of the buttons um, to go to a specific aiming bowl. And in this process, you can also see Orion's accuracy when it comes to uh, scoring as well. Uh, so again, let me uh, just kind of zoom out here to get a view for the target. The next step is what we call the verification process. Now, before we start the verification process, we want to make sure that all of the targets did get assigned to the athletes. And you'll notice that there was one target up here, which I specifically uh, created, that did not get assigned. And you'll notice that um, I did not have a barcode label on this athlete's target. So when Orion scanned it, it didn't know who it was. There wasn't any information for Orion to know uh, who, to, who to assign it to. But you'll notice that uh, the name did get written. And I bring this up for a specific purpose because at some point you will have to manually assign a target to an athlete. And the, the manual assign process, um, you right click on the target image, say assign to, and then we can select the athlete's name, in this case, Sofia Garza, and it is a kneeling target, so I'm going to say it's a kneeling, series one, and click on finish. And when I do that, uh, her target does uh, then get assigned to her under her name. Now you'll notice that most of the target targets are highlighted in, um, not, they're not highlighted at all, um, they just have a white, white background. Um, and that again means that Orion was expecting 10 shots on the target and it did find 10 shots. These other targets, that's not the case. So we look at uh, Gabriella's standing target, Orion tells us expecting 10, but instead have 9. So if I go through this target, I'm going to see if Orion didn't pick up any, any shots. Um, and as I do so, you'll notice aiming bowl number 5, and let me zoom in on aiming bowl number 5, doesn't have any shots. And normally I would actually take the physical target itself and just to verify uh, physically that uh, there are only 9 shots. Um, but in this case, the athlete didn't fire the shot, uh, she missed it, not sure what, uh, but we do need to, to assign a miss. 
and there's two ways to assign a miss to our target. The first way, if we right click on the aim bull, we can say add shot and add a missed shot. We do that, we come up with uh, the miss. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and delete that because I wanna show the uh, second way. And that is simply by using the double click with your mouse. If I hold down the control key on my keyboard and double click the aiming bull, I do the same thing. So you can either do it with the mouse or by right clicking the menu. All right, I'm gonna go to the next target now that is highlighted. In this case, Orion is telling me that it expected 10 shots, but there are 11. And again, I'm gonna look at the target and I'm gonna see what's going on. And lo and behold, on Amy Bowl number 10, the athlete did fire two shots. According to the rule book, if an athlete fires two shots on a aiming bowl, they should skip the next aiming bowl. This athlete did not do that step. The, uh, the athlete did not uh, skip the next aiming bowl, or maybe they just, uh, this was their, their the final shot. Regardless, um, according to the National Standard Three Position RFL rules, I really wish they would come up with an acronym so I didn't have to keep, keep saying that, uh, there is a penalty for this. And according to this particular rulebook, each rule book's a little bit differently, but according to the council rulebook, the highest value shot on the target gets annulled and there is an additional two point penalty. Um, the highest value on the target, if under the shot list, I click on the score column, we see that a 10.5, which happens to be on Amy Bull number 10, I can double click this to zoom in, is the highest value shot on the target. I select it, um, and by select it, I'm just using my mouse. And you'll notice um, the shot hold turns red when it's selected. If I hold my mouse over on the shot to the left and click it, it turns red. That's all that red highlighting means. It just means that's the currently selected shot. So I select the 10.5 because I want to apply a penalty to it. I'm going to right click and say mark as extra shot. When I do that, it nullifies that particular shot and you'll see that Orion assigns a penalty according to the rule book to the lowest value shot on the target. Uh, the next example I have for the score verification process is again expecting 10 but instead have 13. My initial impression of this is probably the athlete did the same thing. They fired too many shots. So again, I'm going to look at the target itself. And lo and behold, the, um, uh, what happened was the athlete fired shots um, that were uh, ciders uh, outside of the uh, scoring box. According to the rules, this is allowed provided the athlete lets the range officer know and the uh, range officer nullifies the, uh, the, the shots in question. Uh, so in this case, these shots do not count against the athlete, but I do need to remove them from Orion uh, so uh, they don't get counted. So for each of these shots, select them and I can either do a right click and say remove shot, or again, using the double click feature on my mouse, I can hold down the shift key and double click the shots, and then they are gone from the system. All right, that is what we call the uh, score verification process. Uh, depending on the rule book you're using, it's gonna vary a little bit differently for each, each rule book, but uh, we just did cover the basics. And um, um, extra shots, probably the most common one. Uh, missed shots are also very common. And if you get into like air pistol, or a BB gun, you have internal, internal crossfires that become common. So again, become familiar with your rule book and become familiar with how to adjudicate those problems within Orion. All right, turn to our last section, which is gonna be on results. If scoring is the heart of the Orion scoring system, results is what makes Orion so powerful because we have lots of different ways to produce results uh, in lots of different formats. Uh, so let's uh, check some of this out. I'm going to go back to my window system and in Orion, I'm going to click over to the match results tab and you'll notice that for the four athletes that I have targets, uh, the scores are already up. Um, over on the top left hand side, you'll notice I have lots of different ways to view results. I currently have it on individual all, which is all the athletes. And if you recall at the start of this, when I set up the match, I said to group athletes by their three position or rifle type. So I can actually view scores for both sporter athletes, uh, click on sporter and click on update. In this case, all four of these athletes are sporters, or I can also do it for precision. 
And, and again, in this case, uh, I don't have any precision athletes, but I can also um, uh, view scores for prone or even for team results. And all of this, uh, all of these results are printable. Uh, to print results, to print out the ranked results, let me uh, go back to the individual sporter for a moment. I can click on print. And this is what the printed results would look like if you uh, sent, sent them to the printer. Um, ranked results by the athletes according to their scores. Uh, another very powerful feature in Orion are the individual score sheets. And to print those, um, you click on the print individual button and you can select who it is you want to print. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say uh, print all the participants. It is just going to print the four participants who have shot scores um, and print uh, prone, standing, and kneeling. And we have the individual score sheets. Uh, they are color coded according to the aiming bowl. Each aiming bowl is a different color. And for each athlete, they have each shot listed with the uh, shot group. Now, learning how to read this, uh, especially the um, coaching features, the um, group analysis, beyond the scope of this presentation. But uh, I do encourage you to uh, seek out in our help documentation to, to learn how to do that. Um, this is a great tool, um, certainly for competitions to hand out at the end of the match. It's also a great tool for coaches and athletes to get together and uh, um, figure out what that they can do, what athletes can do to uh, improve their shooting. So those are the printed results. We also have online results. Now, in the background, while Orion is scoring, Orion has already been sending the results uh, to the World Wide Web. To view the web results, you click on uh, this globe icon. And that will open up the website. You'll see it's called Eric's Example Match. And you'll have the results for, in this case, the sporter athletes. Again, it's the ranked results. Or um, I can click on any of the um, uh, positions. So here are the standing results from our match. And again, this is um, the result center is a feature uh, that's part of the licensing that everybody can use out of the box with Orion. And certainly if you're running a competition, you want to publish your results uh, to, to the internet. And it's built into Orion. Uh, you really just have to enable it. And then finally, the last thing I want to show is for results is the mobile app. So let me reopen up my s iPhone simulator. And at the start of this, when I logged in, I mentioned that uh, wasn't showing in results for today because nothing was created. But I did add myself to this example match. And if I did a pull down to refresh, I can see that, hey, Eric's example match is now being listed uh, for me. So again, um, in Orion, I had my email address listed and it created the link. So it knows that I am part of this match. So I click on the match and I, what we, we come to what we call the um, uh, match home screen. Uh, now, I am a range officer in this match. So that gives me a couple of things that uh, a athlete wouldn't necessarily have. For example... I can view squatting for the entire range, um, and I can see in information about each specific athlete. I do have the capability of creating incident reports. Again, some of the stuff is beyond the basics, so I'm just giving a highlight as to what it can do. Um, I can also view um, incident reports, and I can uh, change um, who I'm looking at uh, on the range itself. And there is a view results button inside of the app and everything that we demonstrated earlier about what you can print off and what's available on the web is also available uh, within the app itself and you also have the shot groups available in the app as well now i mentioned a moment ago that if you are a athlete you can get the score sent directly to your phone um, in this example, uh, I set it up where I am a range officer, so I don't have any scores. But let's see what that would look like if I did have scores. Uh, so I'm going to go back to Orion, and under the Match Competitors tab, I'm going to click on the athlete column. So I am now a athlete in the match. I'm going to go over to Match Scoring, and you'll see that uh, I'm now listed as an athlete under the Match Scoring tab. Um, and I don't, I'm not going to uh, scan targets for myself. Instead, I'm going to um, 
demonstrate another feature that we have built into Orion, which is the shot simulator. And quite literally, the shot simulator, we put this in here so you could use Orion without having to uh, score targets. Um, so I'm going to turn that on and I'm going to say uh, simulate targets for myself as a skilled athlete. Uh, don't be concerned, most of the scores using the shot simulator are actually so bad you wouldn't want to use them anyway. But um, I did simulate targets and you'll see that uh, it did actually create shots on, on the target for me. So now, if I bring back up the shot simulator, uh, the mobile app is going to know that I am an athlete and let's see what that's going to look like. So I'm going to do a pull down to refresh. And now, because I am a athlete, I have this scores box, so it tells me the scores that I have shot. I can view my um, uh, shot and images inside of the app. And on the there's also a registration block, so I know, um, in this case, a squatting, and it knows that, uh, because I set it up, that I am a precision air rifle shooter. So anyway, uh, the mobile app is an accompanying app for both uh, athletes and range officers. And we do, um, uh, for what should be obvious reasons now, recommend that you're using, especially for your athletes, so they can uh, see the scores that they are shooting. All right, uh, that is all of the information that I wanted to present today. I know that this was a lot, and hopefully you got a lot out of it. And again, I will remind you that if you have questions, you can go to our support site or open up the help within Windows. If you don't find what you're looking for there, please give our offices a call, send us an email, and we will get back to you. Thank you very much, and uh, have a you know, great day.